check it. I'm going to just get right into it. Monday night motivation. Y'all know how we do. Monday, 7 p.m. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Mondays is motivation. I only like to be on this thing for a very short period of time on Mondays. So just bear with me. It's just something. Hopefully, I spark a seed in y'all. Hopefully, I motivate y'all to go out and really get to it this week. But, you know, all of y'all know that our community, this movers community, we suffered a real bad loss at the end of last year. December 27th to be exact. One of our movers went home to be with God. Michael Smith Jr. For all of y'all who have been in this community from day one, y'all know he would always check in week over week with the warrior mentality handle. He's the CEO and president of Warrior Mentality Apparel. As you can see, I rep his brand every week. And, you know, that one hurt, man. It hurt. And, you know, as I traveled to North Carolina this week to attend his home going service, I had the opportunity to stop by his home and check in with his wife, Joshia who's in the building right now. She's on the live right now and check in with his mom. And, you know, just going into his house, I undoubtedly sat in one of the same seats that he used to sit in. And I looked around the room and I'm watching probably the same TV shows he used to watch. And I could just feel his presence as we sat there. And then I went outside and right in front of his crib, you know, he would hit me and he would tell me about his big monster truck. And I got a chance to see it and just smile. He had a big monster truck outside and his motorcycle. And I thought to myself, damn, you know, my man is gone. He'll never be able to ride on them joints again. And then as we went to the church the next day, and, um, you know, we went to his church where he was laid to rest. And I walked in to the building. And as I'm walking in that place of worship, I'm thinking to myself, I'm probably taking the same steps that my brother Mike took a thousand times before walking into that church. But today, as I'm walking in, with so many other people who were there on his behalf. Mike was laid out in the front, right in front of that pulpit. And I don't know if he ever thought about it, but I know me, there was never a day that I ever thought I would be attending Mike's funeral. It's just, it's just never even dawned on me. Never crossed my mind as I'm sitting there and we're going through this service. And I started to think, because this is a man, and it was so confusing. You know, first we got to deal with the fact he ain't here. But Mike, this is a man of God. He's been a workout fanatic since he was a little boy. Since he was a little boy, always into working out and clean living. This is a man that didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He was a vegan. And he was only 40 years old. 40 years old. He had so much more life to live. And I don't know. But in that short period of time, I wonder if he knew just how many lives he affected. Just how many people who he came in contact with who loved them just as much as I do, who really was impacted and our lives were made better just because we knew him. And I was at a loss and I'm still in a loss. But in order for us to move on, as I walked out of that place, I thought to myself, Sean, if Mike was here, he would tell you what's done is done. And now it's time you got to let it go. You got to let it go. And as I'm traveling back to New York, my heart is heavy. My mind can't get off him. 
and seeing him just laying up there, I put on one of my favorite comedians, Dave Chappelle, and I'm listening to him on the way home, just trying to get my mind off things, trying to come to just a happy place. And I hear Dave in all of his comedic glory. And it dawned on me at that moment. Like I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about Dave and you know, it went, my mind started going to the Chappelle show. And the Chappelle show is the one that blew him up. It took him to superstardom. But it dawned on me, like, Chappelle show was only on for two seasons. We only had two years of that show. And within two years, he came out with some of the most memorable comedy skits of all time. Things like the race trade. And, you know, the, the, the uh, what is that? The, the, I'm Rick James, bitch and Prince, and all of those things that, you know, we're going to remember for all time that are just as funny today as they was 20 years ago when he did it. But the show wasn't on for long. It was only two years. And I wonder if Dave knew just how much impact he made in those two years, just how many people's lives he affected and loved him. And how much joy and love and laughter that he brought into people's lives week over week. But that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is, as big as that show was, as much as it did for all of us who had the chance to experience it in real time, for Dave, it had run its course. And it was time for him to let it go. At the peak of his career, that show made him a superstar. And he walked away. He knew it run its course. I got to let this thing go. And I remember in real time reading and all of the critics talking about Dave is crazy. They didn't understand him. They thought Dave was on drugs. He was smoking crack. He was doing all of these things. Hollywood was like Dave's hard to work with. He'll never get another job in this um, city again. But for Dave, it's like, yo, I did it before and I'll do it again. I got to step away from that thing because for me, it is dead. It doesn't bring joy to my life anymore. And he let it go. And that's the same thing that I'm trying to tell some of y'all. Some of us get stuck in our own way. We say we want different, but we're scared to do different. We say we want change, but we fight against change. And some of y'all are sitting here in dead in jobs and they call it dead in jobs for a reason. It's time to let it go. It is time for you to look at that job for what it is and for what it's not. For what it was, yes, at one point, it probably was everything to you. But I don't care how early you go in. I don't care how late you stay. I don't care how much butt kissing you do. You're not getting that raise. You're not growing in the company. And sometimes you got to trust yourself. You got to trust God. You got to trust the process and get rid of it. Let it go. And that's the same thing in our personal lives. Because some of us are in relationships that we know we should have let go years ago. This relationship, I don't care what you do for it. I don't care how much lipstick you put on, how many reps you do in the gym, how much you do your hair. It don't matter. That thing is dead and stinking. That dude was bad for you five years ago. He was worse for you three years ago. And he is dead to you now. Let him go. Stop being scared to just move on with your life. Change is a good thing. It is the natural cycle of life, y'all. It really, really is. There is a winter, a spring, a summer, a fall. And each season comes with its own beauty. It comes with its own glory. Why would you hold on to last season? Why are you so scared of going into that new season in your life? 
Learn to let it go and embrace what is to come. Even if you don't understand, even if you are scared to go forward, trust the process. Trust God, y'all. Trust him. This thing that we are going through, this life is short, y'all. It is short. And I tell y'all, when I worked in the music industry, I went from intern to VP. And one day I woke up and I understood that that thing no longer brought joy to my life. It had run its course. That thing for me, it was just me going through the motions. And when I put in my resignation, Everybody told me, Sean, you're crazy. Do you know how much money you're leaving on the table? Do you know you are in line to be the president of black music somewhere? Stay where you're at. But I had to trust the process. I had to trust me. I understood that that thing that once upon a time made me passionate, made me want to wake up early, made me want to go to sleep late. It no longer did it for me. And I had to go out there and bet on myself. And I'm telling y'all, Bet on yourself. Don't be afraid to move forward in this life. Understand, if I didn't take that step years ago, how can I get before y'all today and tell you, don't be afraid to move forward in your life. Let that old thing go. If I didn't do it, I couldn't tell you to do it. Let it go. Let it go, y'all. And I can tell you, if Chappelle didn't let that thing go, even when he left $50 million on the table, what his life had been turned out to be what it is today. This man is the top comedian of all time. He's a comic genius. Comedians, hairless man is the best to ever do it. But he had to walk away from something that was comfortable, something that was paying him, something that he knew inside and out. And just say, you know what? I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust me. And look where he's at today. And as I was in North Carolina sitting and I'm talking to, you know, uh, Mike's wife. And the whole week before, after he passed, his mother, his wife, they're making arrangements. They're writing the obituary. They're writing the order of the service. And then finally, they had to lay this man to rest. They had to put him in the ground. But in order for them to move forward, they had to bury the past. It hurt them to do it. I don't have no doubt right now, this second, that if his wife, Joshia, had the chance to bring him back for one more day, pay any money on earth, she'd find a way to get it and do it. I don't have no doubt that if his mother had it in her power to bring him back just for one more meal sitting at that kitchen table. She would do it, but she can't. What's done is done. And sometimes you got to let things go because for them, doing that service and that obituary and making his arrangements, that was their first step to moving forward. And I'm telling y'all the same thing. Some of y'all are in dead marriages. Some of y'all are in dead relationships. Some of y'all are on a dead end job. I'm not saying jump out the window right now this second, but start making arrangements. Start make writing out that obituary for that dead end job. Start writing out that obituary for that dead end relationship and let it go. Start setting yourself up to get out of it and move on and trust this process that there is something greater, more beautiful. Yes, winter season is here, but right around the corner is spring and then comes summer. There's something bigger and better waiting for you, but you got to take that first step. You got to take it. And for all of y'all, I call y'all movers. This is our community. By definition, movers keep moving. Stop being stagnant. Stop staying in one place. Stop being scared to take a step forward. Movers move. Now get the moving. Because this is what we do, y'all. And then I'm going to tell y'all, and I'll close it out here. Get on your knees. After you make this decision, get on your knees. 
and pray and ask God to deliver you. Even if you don't know where you're going, all you know is this situation that you're in right now ain't it. It ran its course. And once you've done all the praying you can do, once you've shed all the tears you can shed, sit back, wait, get quiet, still, and begin to trust and ask God with expectation that this change that you're praying for, it will come to pass. And I promise you, it will. We are movers, y'all. Get to moving. Hopefully I said something, guys, that is going to motivate y'all to get moving throughout the rest of this week. As y'all can see, this is, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. And um, as I came from North Carolina, this is all I can really think about. I promise y'all, I ain't going to stop moving. It ain't no way under the sun I'm going to stop moving. I don't care how long it take for me to get to the promised land. I know God said, ask what you will. And he's going to open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you wouldn't be able to receive. I ask with expectation and I'm waiting for them blessings to come on down here. I offer y'all to do the same because we all have the power to change our life. Y'all are in here, which tells me that y'all want change. Let's get changed together. Let's keep building each other up and let's keep making power moves. I love y'all. To, again, to my man, Mike Smith, I love him. Please go support. His wife took over his business. Go support warrior mentality. Right now, I got on the um the hoodie. I love hoodies, but I'm putting my order back in. We're going to keep this thing going. His brand will not die with him. We are movers, y'all. And please go and support his brand, warrior mentality. Peace and love, y'all. I see y'all on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Come with questions. Come with, with, with inspirational stories. Come with where you are in your business and let us know because it inspires us to let us know that everybody who's around us don't have it all figured out, just like we don't. We all human. All right, and also check out that Jack Canfield interview we just dropped this week on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and every other streaming platform. I love y'all. Peace and love. My man DJ, whatever, I see you. Joy, I see you. Uh, who else we got here? It's all kind of people in here, but I'm going to end it now. Love. One love, y'all. One.